Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma. I'm Kisma, and today's episode is called The Law of Increase. This is part nine of our series, Working with the Law. And this series actually began quite a while ago, and we'll tell you how to listen to the rest of it. But for now, join us for this incredible way of working with the spiritual laws, increasing more of what you want. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Hello there, Nick. Hello there, Kisma. What's going on with you today? I've been wanting to record these episodes for quite a long time. Yeah, just going to jump right in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, ever since we did the original series, remember when we started it, we yeah. did the first episode and then we're like, well, let's do another one. Let's do, let's another, do one. another one. And eight parts later, yeah. we had done, you know, eight of the 11 laws in this book. And now we're back over a year later to complete yeah. the others. So I've been thinking about this for a while. I'm really I know. excited. That You've we're been doing really it. wanting to do this. And the book is it's called Working with the Law and it's by Raymond Halliwell. Yeah, I can find a link to that in our show notes. Um but it is an amazing book, an, an amazing teacher and author. And and I, I should share there are so many more laws. And then there's the big law of karma. But these separate laws I feel like it helps people understand these little facets of where they can actually work with the spiritual energy, with the universe, God, source, spirit, and make life a whole lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it adds so much clarity Mm -hmm. and it is not necessarily in our modern language. Uh, You know, these were written, I think this book was written back in the sixties, if I believe. I think earlier, maybe. A little bit earlier. I think. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's not in our necessarily really modern language, Mm -hmm. but it is in a language that is very practical, very understandable, and Mm -hmm. the teachings are incredibly clear. Yes. So I'm I'm so excited to to complete the series. We got three more coming your way, you know, including including this one, including this one, and then two more after that to 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 round out the whole series. So today we are talking about the law of increase. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. It's so fascinating when when we all discover what it really means too. Right. Now he talks a lot about in this, at the beginning of the chapter, he talks about prayer and he talks about praise. Mm-hmm. And he kind of draws this, this unique distinction between the two where the prayer is like the wanting, right? It's the desire. It's kind of like the phoning of yeah. Here, here, putting in your order. Yeah. God, right? please give me this and I promise I'll be a good girl if I get it. Exactly. <laughs> please get me through this day. I promise I'll never drink again. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I remember that. I did a few of those with the gigs, you know, show ah. up to that gig and I'm like, oh my goodness, um, I'll never drink again. But uh, he talks about the prayer, I think, in a, in a very unique way. Mm-hmm. And this is something that we've heard so much of in the Vedanta teachings too. Mm-hmm. And Swamiji's talked about this so beautifully about you know, people are, they're reducing prayer to beggary. Ugh, it's yeah. like, I want this, I want that, I want this other thing, you know, gimme, gimme, gimme. And it's got this kind of, you know, selfish tone to it, I think. Yeah. And when he talks about it here, you know, what I what I appreciate about Raymond Hollywell, he's not making it wrong, right? There, We want things in the world. That's okay. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Desire is what propels us through. It's the attitude with which that we ask for one, mm-hmm. and then the praising. Right? He puts this praising into into action. He's like, mm-hmm. the praising is really the fuel uh, behind it all. Yes. And I think that's so powerful. It is powerful. So let's start it off here. I think one of the most interesting parts about this as well is he talks about. These different examples where people, they're wanting to do, he shares a few Bible stories in here. They're wanting to do these big things and they, it's not like they, they went after it and they did the things, but they did it with a thankful heart, a grateful heart, a praising heart. Mm -hmm. And that in the teachings is what really propelled that and made it, made these unbelievable things possible. Well, you know, we always say gratitude is a soothing emotion. 
Right. And that's one of the things too, when we look at And what is our state, our disposition? What does it need to be in order to attract something into our life? And if we're in fear, if we're in anger, if we're in resentment or jealousy, we're going to attract those things in. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to have this beautiful gratitude or praise for what it is we desire and, of course, from where that comes from. Right. And he distinguishes here. The singing of songs or the blowing of trumpets does not bring the results you pray for nor do you suddenly gain favor with God because of it. Interesting. The effect, this is where it takes an interesting turn. The effect of your efforts does not influence God in any sense. God, you know, the law, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it does influence you. Mm -hmm. It enables you to be lifted up and unconsciously touch the law and gain its blessings. Oh, that's so beautiful. Read that little tidbit again. (laughs) <laughs> the effect of your efforts does not influence God in any sense, but it does influence you. It enables you to be lifted up and unconsciously touch the law and gain its blessing. So to me, what that means, and again, everyone, you know, we're coming from a non-specific religious background. We're coming from a spiritual background. God being the law, being the universe, spirit, source, whatever your word is, And what's important here, what this means to me is that God, universe, spirit doesn't need our praise. It's it, that supreme essence is just fine. (laughs) Like It does not need anything, yet it responds to us. Right. And we ourselves need to praise. We need that praise towards the universe, towards the law, so that it becomes, you know, we're close to it. It never goes away, but it becomes our perception of it, our feeling of it, our knowing. I feel like it's our knowing becomes more real and more thick. Yeah, it's like it attunes us right. to that. Because it's it's an inaccurate statement to say the law or the universe is far from us. It's always right here. But I think having that statement of, you know, we we go up and touch the law, it's like, It's such a beautiful way of saying you're working with it. You're working right with it. It's in flow. Yeah. I I really think about it like a, like a harmonization. It's like you're Mm -hmm. harmonizing with these, with these laws, but he puts it into action. And and he says, whereas faith is wisdom and understanding, right? So that's like the understanding part of, Hey, like the laws are, the law is the law. The spiritual laws are the spiritual laws. They are what they are. Mm -hmm. You're not going to influence those. Right. The best that you can do is work with them. them. So faith and wisdom, faith is wisdom and understanding, whereas praise is the application of that understanding. So he brings it into this- like rocket fuel. Right. That's exactly how he describes it as as fuel. Yeah. Yeah. And it brings us into action with it. It puts it into the world. It expresses it through our lives. Gets us into the spirit of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm, Because we're praising it. Yeah. Now, I want to take a moment and let's, because right now we're like, feels good, praise what you want, bring it in. Here's what I see happen when people show up having conversations about working with me or doing the prosperity code or, or joining the ashram is they're focusing a lot on things that aren't working. And that in essence, as I see it, is them using the law of praise in a way that will bring unfortunate results to them. They're putting right. The law of praise to me is like energy goes where thought flows. I know that's a bit of the law of thinking too. And all of these laws are sort of all intertwined, Mm -hmm. but it's like, what are you putting your attention on? And if you're putting attention on what you don't have, guess what? That what you don't have is going to grow. So it's so important to switch it up and put the praise to what you do want to bring in and even in the more subtle way, put the praise to the universe and spirit. Right, right. That And that's a really important part of the whole thing is like, what are you praising? Exactly. Right? And oh. we might not think that we're praising the, you know, the qualities in a person that we don't like. We might not think of that as praise, but when you're putting your attention on that, when that's what you're talking about, you're actually, that is exactly what you're praising in this context. Yeah. A woman was crying bitterly and praying tearfully to God for her release. The master hearing her silenced her and asked, is your God a God of tears, of grief and anguish and pain? Ah, no. God is a giver of joy and peace and happiness and love. You want peace and joy, yet you pray to your father with tears. If you want black, do you ask for white? 
If you ask for fish, do you expect a serpent? Serpent. That's, <laughs> I like how he just throws serpent in there. If you ask for bread, do you not expect or do you expect a stone? And he continues on oh. like this, right? And, and it requires that clarity of thought of and that objectivity to understand what what is it we're actually praising? Right. How many times do you sit down with somebody and expect them to do the same annoying things. The same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, they do the exact same thing, right? There's no space for that other human to maneuver around the energetics that you've set up for that. Yeah. Right. It makes or it very difficult. Or in, in the relationship that you have with them. Yeah. So as you sit down, you expect it to be the same way they end up in that same energetic field and give you the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about gossip. Oh, it's a tough one, like, man. That really, really goes sour. Right. And what are you praising, right? You're praising destruction right. or drama, Unfortunate un events. misfortune. Yeah, yeah, of course. And all these things like you're in talking, 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 sharing and spreading. And that is, I mean, it's like a virus. It really it is. It truly is like a virus. But the thing, and this is what I think is most interesting about it is for whatever that's doing out in the world, it's inside of you. And in your life, it's doing that easily tenfold. This is true. This, that's what we have to really be so cautious about. Yeah. Why these laws and laws, not rules, they're laws. Like they are innate laws. And it's not guidelines. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, and we get to work with them. So rather than take this like, oh, I feel like a bunch of rules. No, these are beautiful spiritual laws that when you learn and you work with them, life really can turn on a dime. Yeah, that, that's actually something we're going to talk a little bit more about in the law of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, he says here, and this is what reminded me so much of Swamiji, prayer should not be one of supplication, pleading, begging, entreating a sad state. It should be one of claiming, declaring, decreeing, praising, and a joyful thanksgiving. Mm. Love that. That's great. Like the joyful Thanksgiving. Yeah. Right. For everything that you do have. What a beautiful way to put it. And it's such a pivot, you know, when it, this, I'll see this happen with a lot of people that say run their own business. Cause I have a lot of clients that have their own business. If they're having a slow month or if something has turned, it's all of a sudden obsession on that without pausing to go, wait a minute, look what I have done. Look what else I have done. Mm -hmm. Praising that is a really fast way to right the ship of any slow month, of anything that goes wonky. It's like, praise what you have received, get back into that energy, that disposition, and things will clean up super fast. Right. Yeah. It's really the fear and the worry starts to take hold so quickly. Mm -hmm. And then it draws the mind right into that the drama around it. Yeah. And then nobody would think of that as praising, but it's true. You're actually praising the problem. Yes. Right. And expanding it. And expanding mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. What else does he say there? Well, speaking of expanding, this mm -hmm. is, I thought really interesting because without saying it, he's actually talking about the energetics here, the energetic consequences. He says, praise expands and opens the mind upward. And if you think of mind as energy, mm -hmm. which is really what it is, it yeah. expands the mind upward while it's opposite. Condemnation contracts and restricts. Ooh, say all that again, because right? that's gold. Praise expands and opens the mind upward. The mind, the heart, the receptivity, the field, everything. Exactly. Because the mind is in all places of us. Yeah. For me, I just think about that as the energy. Yeah. It expands the energy. It allows that container to be more mm -hmm. open and more resilient. While, the, while it's opposite, condemnation contracts and restricts. Mm -hmm. So small, small, small. Mm -hmm. Right. We want more, yet we condemn and criticize others. And that contracts and restricts our own energetic container so that we don't have the ability to receive as much. Absolutely. And, it, it's it's so powerful because when you think of it, I, I, I think I talked about this. I know I did in the karma money cleanse. There's a place where I just said, you know, when you criticize people with money or when you make money wrong, then you're really affecting everything that you do with money. But furthermore, why would more money come your way? If you're making money wrong, or say you want a relationship and you're jealous of somebody else's, wherever you make something wrong that you actually want, 
Why would it find its way to you? You know, that's interesting. Like I see that a lot in dating where uh, somebody want, they want to attract somebody into their life, but they're actually criticizing everybody who's showing up because they're not like the perfect thing. Now, I'm not saying that you should be with whoever shows up you know, mm-hmm. be discerning. Get, I think you should be with who you want to be with, you know, get the perfect mate for you. Uh, but when you're really criticizing and condemning the people that are showing up, what does that do? Like exactly. how much harder does that constrict? Yeah. Very fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says here, he kind of, I thought he put this a really interesting way. Have you ever had someone condemn or criticize your efforts when you were trying to please? Did you not feel like folding up within yourself? Oh, I bet we all have that moment. Absolutely. Especially when we were children, or this happens a lot if you have an amazing idea, a new venture, and you start sharing it with people, and they go into their own kind of mindset of disbelief, or they can't see the possibility so they start pouring on doubt on you. And sometimes this, this happens a lot with parents and children. Sometimes parents will do it to protect, like, well, I don't want you to be disappointed. But whatever the case is, somebody condemns it. And all of a sudden, like this expansive, amazing, bright, beautiful vision just goes south. Yeah. Yeah. So true. He, he says, did you not feel like folding up within yourself? Perhaps you even felt like quitting the job and letting someone else worry about it. Least of all, such an experience suppressed your interest and zeal. This is absolutely true. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so true. It, it shaved off several percentages of your excitement. Right, right. And for somebody like me with the optimism, right, the optimism driver, uh, you know, that's something that... I, Personally, I just have to be mindful of. I'd be mindful about who I share things with and and where those things go. And it's just, it's not so much of a protecting thing as it is allow really, mm-hmm. really allowing the the momentum to take place and the roots to set, uh, you know, before. Right. Right. Cause because it's uh that that particular driver is kind of um vulnerable that right, way. Right. Yeah. But a lot of times anybody who's in an optimistic state and wanting to do their yeah. thing, like it's it's the condemnation is really it's rough yeah yeah but that's that's as the listener like that's your responsibility to not take that on not take it on and and, not do that to others right not do it to others and this is why you know not to get off track too much but there is a spiritual teaching that when you have something really amazing happening in your life keep it close when you have something challenging happening in your life, keep it close. Like you really have to guard things closely mm-hmm. and share with only a trusted few. Yeah. Very, very true. Uh, he talks here about praise with the heart. He says, praise with the heart is far more vital and effectual than praise with the head or praise with the lips. Now, when I think about this in action, like he's praise is an active state. It's mm-hmm. not like just an idea. And that's kind of what he's saying here. When he's saying heart, it's an embodied state. Mm-hmm. It's in your whole being, right? You're living it mm-hmm. uh, rather than just thinking it and certainly rather than just talking it. Right. Right. So the words, I think whatever words you choose around that, the words are important because they allow you to connect with that state, but ultimately it is the state. It's not a thought. It's a state of being when you're in that state of praise. That's when your full heart is Mm -hmm. engaged. And, you know, the heart is incredibly resourceful as far as like an energetic source. The heart is incredibly resourceful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And lots of times when there is lack and limitation around the fear or the worry starts to come in, uh, certainly in condemnation and criticism, those are all things that shrink that, that particular energy. Mm-hmm. It contracts that energy. This reminds me of how we often work with helping people get clear, you know, like the mindset piece. Okay. You can think something, right. You can praise with a thought. Um, you can verbally say it, but if the energy in you, the heart isn't clean and clear. It's not as sustainable and as deep praise. That's right. And so the clearer we are, the more working with the law-ish we are, 
that praise, be, it, it, it's uh, it's stronger. It has a stronger essence to yeah, it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you're more resourceful in yourself. Right. And we all, and I see it again, is like the natural disposition that you're carrying around, the frequency, the vibration, because we know what it's like to like say something nice to someone. Oh, you look so nice today, or congratulations on that promotion. You turn around and in your heart, and I'm not saying you guys are doing this, but it happens right in the heart the very person is like, oh, I should have had that or they don't wow. really deserve it, right? It's such right. a quick pivot. So to have it come deep from the heart is the most important. Yeah, truly shine through in mm-hmm. all its clarity, right? That's the beauty of it. He speaks here about Thanksgiving. Now, I don't know the exact date that this episode is coming out, but I know it's going to be right it's around, around Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And this is a beautiful way to look at it. He says, Each year, we have a Thanksgiving service, and many think it is for us to express our gratitude for the year past. If you think a moment, excuse me, if you think a moment, you can readily see that this is a reversal of the law of praise. So if you just look at it for a second, you see that this is actually a reversal. Such a service should be a, should not be a review. It should be a preview That is, a true thanksgiving service should be an expression of our faith, not in the past, but in the present and in the future to come. Yeah. That is thanksgiving. Drop the mic, Raymond. Drop the mic. (laughs) Raymond is laying it down. But he's so right. It's so right. And that was the funny thing. Like, I think about thanksgiving. I think it's a beautiful holiday, actually. I really appreciate the... Uh, it gives one time to stop and ponder. Yeah. And I know it means a lot of different things to other people, family and all that kind of stuff. For me, uh, Thanksgiving is like the essence of it is really about Thanksgiving. It's about mm-hmm. praise. Mm-hmm. And and for sure, a lot of that in my own life has been about what has happened, you know, what, what happened in the past and mm-hmm. all the things that I have to be grateful for. And I think that's the normal thing. But when he puts it... Right. And that's the past, right? And the past is dead. Right. And what is he all? He's constantly putting this into the present and into action. Right. And in order to do that, it's praise for the present and praise for the future to come. Yeah, that's great. That's the beauty. And then he he follows that up with the example of uh, Jesus with the bread and and bread and wine. Yeah. Right. They had like five loaves to feed, I don't know, 50 or 500 people. I can't remember how many, a whole lot though. A lot of fives. A lot lot of zeros. And not nearly enough. (laughs) And he was praising and they just kept handing it out. That's a miracle. And then, and what did he say after that? He's like, dude, well, he didn't say dude, but (laughs) he might have, maybe he did. I don't know. He's kind (laughs) of a hippie. Uh, But he did say, every one of you can do this. Yeah. That's what's so cool. That's the part that I think gets missed. Yeah, Yeah, it does get missed. He knew the law and he knew that he wasn't outside of the law. Right. He was working with it. He was a master of the law. Mm. That's what's so powerful, I think. Now, he continues on here. Many students fail to repeat their demonstrations because they take too much for granted or they become careless with the law. Okay, careless with the law. After they have enjoyed the blessing. So this is a bit, and I get it. It's like, oh, everything went so well. Like I can go back to eating my sugar and talking about people and watching reruns of Law and Order. Like there's just kind of that. And and I think this is tied into, for me, why it's important to, when something great happens, like, yeah, celebrate, but don't lift your fever too high. You know, it's like not too high, not too low, the neutral state, because when you're neutral and objective, you can continue working with the law. Mm -hmm. But when you get careless with the law and then it, it kind of, people be like, well, didn't it worked? And then it didn't work. It's like, well, where did you get careless with the law? Mm -hmm. And the celebration thing is something that can upset it. It can upset it. It it really, it actually can. Uh, I see it. I've seen this a lot of times with, especially with newer entrepreneurs where they'll make a great sale. They'll enroll a new client. Or they'll uh, have a seven figure year and then spend it all. Right. But they Mm. won't. And then they'll stop. Mm -hmm. Right. They'll stop right there. And it's like, no, that's your anchor into the moment and into the energy. Like you use that to propel you forward. And that's the, that is the law of increase. Like this chapter is called the law of increase. The whole reason we're talking about the praise is because the praise is what expands you into that ever increasing state. Right. You know, you honor that part 
no matter how small it might be, of a person that might annoy you and guaranteed that quality will begin to shine more. Yes. You know, you really honor that. And I want to back up for a second. Not that everybody knows that I'm backing up in the book, but I'm going back a page. (laughs) Our degree of faith in the law and God is measured before we receive not this is so important. Afterwards. So please break this one down. Yeah. The degree is measured before we receive and not after. It's full faith, right? It's that full faith. It's like you don't wait till you get the new house or whatever it is you want or something to then say, okay, it works. You're in. I'm working with the law. That's that's the beauty of the expectation in the whole manifesting. You have your attention, what you want, the interest, the interest is going, you're focused, you're doing. And the expectation, of course, it's going to work out. The challenge with that is sometimes people, it comes in in different ways than what they think. So it's having the receivable energy and having that full faith even before it arrives. Yeah. And it's measured, measured Mm. by before you receive, not right. afterwards. Not like, after, because it's easy. Like yeah. when the lot, like, I don't know, we're not talking about the lottery here, but you, someone hands you a check, you know, for 10,000, you're really excited. It's like, oh, it works. No, it works before you get the check. Right. It's always working. The laws are always working. The question is, are you working with them? Right, right. And the receiving, I think, is an important piece of this because many times people will get the law to work and then... Mm -hmm. They shut it down. Oh, that's too much. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I can handle that Mm or, or, Ooh, like, I don't know if I deserve that. Or they get, they just somewhere they get weird around the receiving. Well, in this, we can touch upon in the next episode. Um, So make sure you stay tuned everyone when we talk about sacrifice, because there really is a something to give up to create space for the higher. Right. And when someone's field isn't ready or prepared to receive and contain it and maintain it, things can get a little wonky. Right. Yeah. That'll be a super interesting episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last Last part here I wanted to cover is a faithful law, faithfully observed, will ever reward generously the observer. The law of praise will lift you from sickness to health. It will raise you from ignorance to intelligence, from poverty to affluence, from weakness to strength, from fear to courage. In fact, the law of praise will promote you in all things and in all ways Begin using the law now. <laughs> very, right clear, now. very clear directive from Raymond. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's it's something for all areas. If you want more sickness, praise this. Don't praise your, or excuse me, who wants more sickness? If you want better health. Right, don't right? praise the sickness. Don't praise the sickness. Mm-hmm. Praise the health. Praise, mm-hmm. praise the amazing things about your body that are already functioning mm-hmm. beautifully. Yeah, and this, you know, in the world, everyone, this can be a challenge. Like if you do go to the doctor and they're they're asking questions about the symptoms and the symptoms and the focus ends up there, it can pivot your mind away from focusing on health. You know, if you're wanting more income, more money, more profits, more abundance, but you're really obsessed with what's on your credit card bill, you need to change that because Mm -hmm. you're praising the credit card. You're there's a way to praise the credit card for allowing you to do things, but you're you're putting energy on creating more debt. Right. Rather than receiving more abundance. Right. And it's not just the thinking, it's the being around that. It's the being around it. I love that he uses that word praise for mm-hmm. that active being. Yeah, I think that's that's the difference, right? It's like, oh yeah, grateful, all of that, but praise is is really your essence, your being, your vibration around yeah. it. Put into the just put into the world in such mm-hmm. a beautiful and powerful way. Mm-hmm. The law of increase. Well, I have an illuminated thought. Let's hear it. My illuminated thought for this episode, the law of increase, is you can have the cake and eat it too. The entire cake, just be grateful for it. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love these series. I almost forgot how much fun they are to they do. Are fun. And you make sure you tune in next week because we're going to continue with this series uh, for two more episodes until we close out the complete. Mm-hmm. If you want to go back and get to the first ones, go back to episode 123. Mm-hmm. And in episode 123, we started with the law of thinking. Yeah, that's a great one. So, yeah. And then there was eight parts of it. Yeah. And again, that. all these laws are, they work together, you know, it's kind of all one big thing 
the umbrella is the law of karma. It's just mind blowing, but man, it, you know, why not put this into your mind rather than anything that's negative and going to pull you down? Yeah. It's, it will only lift you up. Exactly. So the law of increase. You're all amazing. Thank you all for being here and for listening. Thank you for uh, being a part of the illumination podcast. If you got a question, send us a, send us a, an email to hello at illuminationpodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. Namaste. Peace. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste.